Now, a teacog isn't technology, it is biology. I am so excited for this one. Our first of many Transformers Prime Q&A videos with the topic today being random biology questions. But some of you got excited at the word question and completely missed the bold text somehow. There will be another video covering all the questions about sexuality because I thought the best way to tackle them was to link them together. All that is necessary to answer the big one, is Nako actually gay? For now, we're looking at really specific questions about how Cybertronians worked in the aligned continuity, pulling the info from all four current cartoons, the novels, comics, and games for the best possible answers. When things are not explicitly explained, we shall do what we can to speculate. Energon questions. If Energon is so explosive, why don't bots explode when they get shot? There are two ways I see to answer this question. As far as I know, it is only unrefined and synthetic energon that were explosive. However, it could be possible that processed energon is still explosive, but bot blood isn't. We have seen in the show that the blood in their bodies contain traces of their DNA, called CNA. Their cells might act as guards in their blood to eliminate its combustibility. Do bots have DNA, RNA, cells? The first part is an easily answered question within the show. They are made of living metal, and each individual has their own genetic code. This is what Predaking is able to scan in Wheeljack's blood, and this is why Starscream's blood provides the CNA for cloning. CNA is their DNA, and RNA would exist with a different term. Since bots are also able to heal their injuries, it is assumed that they do have replicating cells, and these cells would be containing that CNA. Do Cybertronians drink or eat Energon, or only inject it? We don't usually see Energon taken in Transformers Prime, just the processing and injection. However, Knockout does say this line. <laughs> what are you going to do? Drink it? And if we want to dive into the Forbidden show, we do see this weird ass creature eating it. The novel Exodus talks about the drinking of Visco, an alcohol. Cybertronians seem to have some sort of stomach like organ, where things go when swallowed. No. I think I'm gonna heave up my Energon processor. Bulkhead! Be a pal and hand me an oil pan, will ya? <laughs> Not for all the Energon on Cybertron, kid. Let's tack on the next question. Can Cybertronians consume raw Energon? I strongly believe that they can, because at some point Cybertronians were created without advanced technology. Also, there are mentions of many animalistic species on Cybertron, so they have to survive off something. Insecticons had lived alone underground for a long time without that technology as well. And consider that Insecticon on Earth. I am sure he would have just eaten that chunk. Can you imagine Prime is creating a people that relies on needles for each meal? Cybertronians likely can consume raw energon and would if need be, but prefer to process it first. There are advantages to processing instead of eating raw when it removes any filth that a Cybertronian is not meant to consume. Those crystals on Earth are coated in dirt. It could be like, we can drink spring water, but you might want to filter it to be safe. Secondly, it takes energy to process energon from crystal to liquid inside oneself. When Starscream is scavenging for energon, he needs to conserve all the energy he can. Consuming the red energon raw also could have two disadvantages. Energy is wasted digesting it, and it takes longer for its effect to activate. Cybertronians inject process energon directly into their veins for immediate use, but the size of those needles would leave constant holes to heal. Now hold on a moment because I will make a note about Predacons. I think we can add here, why do Cybertronians have teeth? Some kind of hard plating would help break energon into smaller parts. They would not need individual teeth, nor necessarily sharp teeth. The answer to the reason for the difference falls under the beast questions. Can Cybertronians drink or eat other things? Yes, but only Energon sustains some. It also depends on the species. Energon is vital for the survival of all life forms, but we do get that mention of alcohol. What is uncertain is if they can actually use that as fuel, or if at some point it gets thrown up. Several Cybertronians are carnivorous, however, some are able to digest metal while some cannot. Scraplets eat metal for fuel, since it just seems to disappear entirely. That chompasoid species in Robots in Disguise could consume metal as well and has carnivorous potential. But we have the most information about the Predacons thanks to the Covenant of Primus. In the chapter dealing with the original race, we learn that Predacons hunted and killed animals. They ate the bodies, but only could process the energon. The other parts are filtered out, and I'm just assuming that means spat out. 
You might wonder why Predacons would even do that, when Energon occurred naturally everywhere. They could be an example of Cybertronians that actually cannot process raw Energon. To survive, they need to drink the processed blood of others. This explains why the Predacons died on Earth although they were guarding Energon. They ate the Autobots, and once there were none left, they starved. Since Insecticons seem capable of eating raw Energon, they might not be carnivorous at all, despite appearances. Going off the Covenant of Primus, they ate up rock and filtered out tiny traces of Energon from it. But Cybertronians certainly do not need gasoline, as RC said. At least you don't have to buy gasoline. Can a Cybertronian live off other forms of Energon if supply wasn't a problem? This question requires some thinking. Dark Energon was a drug-like fuel consumed by Decepticons in the war. It invoked aggressive behavior and a strong addiction. Bots went crazy without it, but if you kept taking it and built a tolerance like Megatron, could you live? Or did Megatron ever really have a safe tolerance? In Transformers Prime, was Megatron taking regular Energon as well? Unicron is like Primus, except he's a being of pure death. His goal is to destroy all life. His blood has supernatural powers, so that blood is going to hurt you inside. Living solely off it is bound to kill you eventually, just as Alva Trion believed. Now, Megatron is seen to bleed both blue and purple throughout the show. He is taking Energon because he needs it to stay functional, but he also regularly takes Dark Energon. This combination could be functional. The blood color might be dependent on how long ago it was since he had taken Dark Energon. Now, why are Megatron's eyes sometimes red and sometimes purple? This also includes why do their eyes change color based on the Energon? Cybertronians seem equipped to show possible issues inside them through their eyes. Like if something unusual enters their bloodstream, it shows and other Cybertronians can see it. This rescue bot's quote might apply here. He has been acting weird lately. I haven't noticed anything. His optics were clear, his spark pulse normal. Red Energon may actually turn eyes red, but we cannot tell with Starscream. Starscream's eyes are immediately purple upon taking Dark Energon, but they flash later on. Why is that? And Megatron, same thing. But there is an explanation. There's something dark and supernatural about Unicron's Energon, it's almost like it is alive, and Unicron has such a strong attachment that he can literally control you. Little bits of him are in that Energon. The book Exodus had the substance recorded by ancient scientists as the Sparks of Unicron, unveiling the idea that perhaps tiny amounts of spark energy is within Energon. Notice that their eyes only ever turn purple when they call upon its power. Starscream's eyes turn purple only when he gets hyped about it. You cannot harm me while dark Energon flows through my veins! Megatron goes into purple overdrive without consuming more of it because he's encouraging it to take his body, basically letting a demon use his body like a vessel. If Megatron is thinking, let's do some necromancy, that dark energy on lingering inside is going to react and activate its demonic powers. Back to the first question, what about red energy on? We saw no harmful effects and it may be 100% fine to consume, but the problem lies elsewhere. Their bodies would be constantly in overdrive. But what about recovery, overworking one's body? This speed probably would wear down your joints. And if you always feel energetic, how could you rest? Yes, that question of sleep will be coming up later. Unfortunately, living purely on red energon might shut oneself down. Toxic energon is obvious, no. What about Ratchet's synthetic energon? It appeared stable, providing him with energy, with only the aggressive side effect. Unless there was damage incurring that we didn't yet see, it seems that you actually could live off that green drug. Are there other forms of energon they could consume? I bring this up because I am fascinated by the idea of more energon forms that simply did not get mentioned in the show. I was also surprised when RescueBots Academy showed some pink energon crystals. It may just be a design choice, but it had me wondering that perhaps pink energon exists in Transformers Prime. Energon with no effects, but just a rarer color of regular energon. Maybe yellow, orange, or white energon even exists and have their own quirks. Have fun with the possibilities. How often do Cybertronians consume energon? How much do they require? This is a question with no conclusive answer, but it doesn't seem to be every day. No one ever shows concern when they are potentially stuck on their own for days, but they show concern for humans instead, such as in rescue bots. Yet we see the amount the Autobots might have used in Season 3. Considering how active they are, I might estimate that they need some once a week. 
or possibly one large dose that lasts a while versus tiny doses possibly daily. Starscream on his own for moms was constantly searching and he used an excuse of energon deficiency to Megatron. So Megatron would know that in the months Starscream was alone, he would need fuel or he would perish. That is why I'm placing it down to days or a week. As for your amount, these vials are likely your average dose. Do they use their blood to power their blasters? If so, are they losing a lot of blood in fights? Ratchet mentions that Energon powers their ammunition, and we see that their technology runs on Energon too. Uh, uh, uh. This iteration of the formula requires further trial before we can even think about using it for fuel, ammunition, or first aid. Their Energon is powering their guns, but it doesn't mean they're firing blood at each other. They're basically burning calories, is all. That heats up their blasters to fire or whatever it is they're firing. Plasma? They aren't losing blood, just using energy. Constantly firing would be quite tiring though. Beast questions. Why do animalistic Cybertronians exist and why do many resemble Earth creatures? This answer lies in the Covenant of Primus. Onyx Prime had a relic called the Triptych Mask, which let him see into the minds of alien species across time and space. Onyx Prime sacrificed himself, giving himself to the Well of Allsparks because he wanted to inspire diversity in the life forms it would produce. His relic shot out a beam that scanned through time and space, so it was able to get those Earth creatures that did not yet exist. All these Cybertronians are the result of him, the Cybertronian animals themselves, and the intelligent life forms with animalistic traits. This explains minicons like Ravage, all the crackpots of robots in disguise, teeth variety, claws, and tails even on the car Cybertronians. Behavioral patterns are also adopted from the animal species, so I like to assume many of these animal types are loony. That they happen to have been locked together on the ship in Robots in the Skies. A madhouse, not because they represent your average Decepticon. Predacons are funny, see? If they are based on alien creatures, that means that somewhere organic dragons do exist. Maybe not on Earth, and maybe not breathing fire. But hey, alien dragons and griffins confirmed. Can Cybertronians scan living creatures? Not all Cybertronians can scan actually. Look at Insecticons and Predacons, real beast formers from the start who stay as they are. They of course might have other abilities such as the Predacon ability to scan and track blood. But your average Cybertronian can scan living creatures. They can even scan each other as Hotshot did with Heatwave in Rescue Bots Academy. More on that later. And also some weird shit went down in rescue bots. They all became dinosaurs. But scanning an animal affects your behavior. Optimus has a dino form in line, but he probably refused to use it in Prime in case he lost control and hurt his teammates. Ultimately, most Cybertronians can change into forms that help them survive in other places. There are limitations to be discussed. How can Arachnid control Insecticons? What is her species? Arachnid belongs to a race called Arachnicon, and another name Dr. Cogwheel was mentioned as an old colleague of Ratchet in the Covenant of Primus. I suppose that Arachnicons are intended to exist with and guide Insecticons. Arachnid calls herself a queen and that could be their purpose considering that beast bots are inspired by alien creatures. Arachnicons could be intended to protect the hive, getting into their minds by using a certain frequency to move them to safety. Optimus, no word yet from Bulkhead. But I am detecting some rather curious subterranean frequencies. Arachnid is taking advantage of their biological connection and making them attack whoever she wants. How was she able to keep control of the Insecticons after being bitten? Arachnid is the only one who is bitten but not killed by Silas. She's now like Silas, craving Energon because she is burning it up too fast. Alive, she retains her intelligence and abilities. What are Arachnid's webs made of? How many can she make? The webs of an Arachnicon are sticky metal mesh. Arachnid uses them as traps, but Dr. Cogwheel used hers to close bleeding wounds. She also carefully used her legs to help perform surgeries, whereas Arachnid just stabs bots. Is there a limit? Arachnid's body is producing the webs, much like other liquids and things bots produce. She also produces burning venom in her teeth and claws, blades that come out. Heatwave in Rescue Bot says that he can synthesize water. So he was doing it on Cybertron to put out fires. Arachnid may be consuming something additional to get her webs, but she would have a limit before needing the time to synthesize more of them. 
do Cybertronian animals possibly have bipedal forms? There's a difference between the animals on Cybertron and the intelligent life forms. The animals are those such as turbo foxes, razor snakes, and space slugs from the games, who cannot transform. Predacons were assumed to be a large animal species, not an intelligent life form, because their protoform is actually the beast form, and their alternate form is the bot form. In the past, no one knew about TCOGs, but they still had them inside, how very Predacons were talking to each other in their own language. The same problem probably occurred with Insecticons. They were never Cybertronian animals, just animalistic Cybertronians. So this is why Predacon had a TCOG, and why everyone had assumed he had not. What Cybertronian species exists? Robots in the Skies gives you a whole bunch of specific names for the animalistic types. It is overwhelming and sometimes lame, but some include Chompasoid for these things, Quarvacon for the Crowbots, Snakethacon for the Long Duders. Minicons are a classification, but even within that, we have certain races like Cyclonians, who turn into balls. Your average Cybertronian is a biped with different types. There isn't a specific name given, but the fandom calls the flightless ones grounders. I think there could be a distinction made for the tank-like ones too. Two wheelers are mentioned, some tiny bipeds with two wheels of course. Now are seekers a race? Seekers being the term for the race is debatable. Being a seeker was an occupation, the elite flyers who act as the aerial military soldiers of Cybertron. Of course in a caste system, being forged as a flyer would usually mean you were going to serve in the military. So the blending of the idea could have happened, that they saw bipedal flyers and automatically connected them to the military. Yet Starscream did not consider all flying vehicles as Seekers, just the ones designated as more elite. So Seekers are technically not a race, but since bipedal flyers are their own thing, the term Seeker can be slang for that. Now we have various designs for insect-like robots, so there could be several species of them. Insecticons and Prime are a species and all that they are known as. Predacons come in many shapes and are not all flight capable, and some have four limbs instead of six. There are also some Cybertronians that do not have bipedal forms, but they still turn into cars. I feel like it is appropriate to call them quadrupeds, a rarer variety. What do you think? I really want to designate another video to the breakdown of races and what instincts they may have. So here I was thinking I could fit all these questions into two videos, but it just isn't going to happen. Now I predict that you're going to get four videos to answer your questions, so please have patience because I will get to them. The script and audio is already done, so you won't be able to submit more biology questions. However, you can start planning what to ask for plot and culture questions in the future. The next video will be on transformation related questions. It is biology.